No, I'm, I'm with you. I actually, my greatest eating experience ever was with full hand, shirt off, straight gallon of milk, pasta to the face. Um, by my- <laughs> <laughs> when did you do this? You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. I'm interested in this. When you get to Italy, land the plane, you guys go to your apartment, you get some, you know, pizza, pasta, whatever you're getting. <laughs> pizza, pasta, pasta, pizza. <laughs> what are you doing on day two? Like when you get there, you set up your shit, you go to bed, now you wake up. What is your plan? <laughs> so McLeese gets there a month before I do like basically a full month. I get in April 17th to fly into Rome and then take a train from Rome to Florence. Yeah. Now it's like noon. All right. It's like noon and noon in Florence. Okay. I'm probably going to try and stay up and uh, stay up for like two days so that I don't get jet lagged. But uh, <laughs> a lot of espresso. A lot of, I don't, I don't know. Coffee messes my system, but uh, honestly, like when I can kind of just like get adjusted and feel like, good i plan on just walking the streets for a little while i have classes that start i believe may 1st or something like that Mm. um but i'm just gonna spend two weeks walking around familiarizing myself like kind of finding like a cool coffee shop Mm. uh uh, my main plan is to like get a bike and just take like mcleese has a camera and uh, i'll just bike around and take pictures of shit (laughs) yeah uh, for a little bit, but they have programs or like uh, these events for kids who are in college and kids who are uh, like in their 20s where there's like meetups. It's like five euros for like all you can drink sangria or all you can drink mm-hmm. beer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You have to talk in Italian. You have to get the language. Do you know so, any Italian? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to say like, like, io sono un uomo. I'm, the, I'm a man. <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> That'll get you far. <laughs> like, you know, what are, like, assuming, assuming your own gender. <laughs> exactly, just immediately. I mean, that's, I feel like in, a, in English, there's definitely a lot of like gender pronouns that we can like balance between, but I can't imagine like all the other romance languages where like words are literally female or male based on, or, like theoretically based on uh, just the language. Like you can't really change that too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, so interesting. Well, what's the? So I get the whole take photos, get beers, talk to people. Sure, sure. What's the class thing then? My class is a is an Italian class. Over so twenty hours a week, I have an Italian class. Um, to learn Italian. To learn Italian, and then for another twenty hours a week, I have an internship, which I'm trying. I sent in my application, my. Uh, resume and like a cover letter for what I wanted to do, which would essentially be, I really want to work in either a wine bar or on a vineyard part-time. Um, they might put me in a hotel, which is like what I'm trying to leave right now. And I'm trying to like get away from, yeah. but if they do that, I'll learn the language a lot faster. But um, if I learn the language mm. with what I do here, uh, like managing essentially three or four different uh, restaurants and overseeing operations here, mm. I could probably get a job doing a lot of things if I just learned the language. So the main yeah. goal is to go for six months, hope I learn enough of the language to get a job, and then I have a visa paid for so I can stay longer. Oh, yeah, that sounds dope. So are you starting now with the language stuff? Like, are you doing little YouTube videos? Or yeah, and I, I don't want to brag, oh. but I'm kind of like on level five of basics in Duolingo. <laughs> and level five gets you to I am a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that <is> close. yeah. <laughs> that's good wait i think i oh know this might be french that un, do, trois, quatre. yeah it's french it'd be un, due, tres, and some I, I got to three i, I just remember, remember yeah. no, don't go over numbers they haven't gone over numbers yet <laughs> yeah. i remember because i was a little kid my mom was trying to teach me and i just remembered cat was uh was four <laughs> that's four that <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like how I remembered it. I was just waiting to say. Did learn though, you know, like this kind of pasta. What would you call this? Fafed. Yeah, but would you call it like bow tie pasta? Why? Well, I, I would prefer that. I thought it was okay. Well, I always thought like fafed, but or whatever. And I always called them bow tie pasta, but it's butterfly. Butterfly. Fafed butterfly. Oh. Okay. 
<laughs> it does look like a butterfly wing. I get that. Yeah, and I, that never made sense to me until <laughs> I saw that though. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The the trip is gonna be really cool, uh, regardless of anything that happens. It's more of like just a way, like stepping out of comfort zone. Uh, being what, are you, what, are you, <laughs> what are you most scared about going to Italy? Honestly, like, so when I was abroad, uh, my junior, like when I was in college, I went to Spain. I had a really hard time because I realized I didn't know a lot of Spanish and um, I kind of just like reverted into myself and kind of like shut down and stopped trying to learn. Um, So I don't want that to happen. I think that I'm more mature and more aware than I was then, but I would hate it if I went and spent all this money and all this time and all this energy to not learn. Like the main goal, like every time me and McLeese talk is to learn something every day, whether it's like a new word or a new way of cooking, or maybe like, oh, wow, have you seen this street in this town? Mm -hmm. But the general overall goal of me going is to one, learn Italian and to two, study wine. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sick of reading out of a book. Yeah. Not how I learn. I just, I cannot retain information that way. Mm-hmm. I can retain like 20%, but mm-hmm. for me to get the additional 60, 70, 80% of that knowledge, I physically have to go touch things and interact with the environments in which they're like grown in. Yeah. So, I'll say also, I feel like a good spot to go for that is if you're going into a market, like a local market and just every single, like whether it's a cheese or tomato, like whatever you pick up. <laughs> yeah. And just like, but it'll legitimately, cause to hold it, to hold the food item in your hand, and like see it, feel it, smell it, and say it out loud while like talking to someone else. I feel I'm like sure, it's I'm direct. sure during COVID at the market, they're going to be real acceptable of some American oh. kid coming in. Like, <laughs> what's this? Yeah. yeah, give it a little lick. Yeah. <laughs> mm, tomate. <laughs> oh, tomate. No, tomato isn't even tomate. I don't remember what it is, but <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> yeah. So with the wine thing, though, how do you how do you get into that? without spending a shitload of money on restaurant wine? The, I mean, the good news is, honestly, wine in Europe is far less expensive. Most of the costs that we end up seeing over here from Italian, French, all European wines are uh, due to, like, shipping costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, shipping costs, you have these distributors or these producers that have been making wine for thousands of years, so they have notoriety, so those wines are a little bit more expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, I'm not, I actually don't know if this is still applicable, but I know when Trump was in office, he put in a hundred percent tariff on cheese, cheese and wine as just like a big fuck you to the EU. Oh my gosh. It's just like so unnecessary. But um, that's one of the main reasons a lot of wine is ex- more expensive in America. But in Italy, you can have access to really high quality wine because it was made 10 minutes from here or 30 minutes from there. Um, and you may not be able to get like the really well-known producers, Mm -hmm. but you can still get a lot of really good wine for fairly inexpensive. Um, so like my initial goal was like, I'm just going to get on bike and bike to every vineyard in Tuscany and just be like, Hey, can I work? Mm -hmm. I'll work for free. I don't care. Like any hours you need. And I feel like that's just a numbers game until someone's like, sure, fine. You can help out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I'm not really sure how, uh, Italian culture responds to people just kind of like <laughs> hitting up their house being like, yo, can I work? But yeah, I actually have two, I was going to say, I should connect you with, um, our, the designer for pocket change, her name is Zoo. And then our app developer, Leo, um, both live in Italy, different parts, but, um, you should literally even just hop on a zoom and chat with them about kind of, cause they'll obviously have a, a different sort of sure. experience of the culture stuff. But, um, I think that'd be fun. Hang out with Zoo. Oh, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a cool experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, my cover letter. I talked about how like uh, wine is a form of art. Mm-hmm. Same same with music. Like the the outcome of music is emotion and essentially dancing. You know, you feel something and you physically react. Mm-hmm. I would say like, there's obviously more to it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with like painting, so you see an artwork, sometimes you have an emotional reaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, like there's a uh, cause and effect with mm-hmm. wine though. You can smell it, you can taste it, you can experience it alcoholically, like the way it impacts your body. 
And I don't know another art form that allows you to express three different levels of sensory input, um, mm. same way that wine does. Yeah. So I just think, I think personally, like that's why it's so uh, motivating to me and so cool. Well, you have not heard my beats then because I've got fine. <laughs> Can I take your beats? You smell my beats, bro. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should make a water company where you put water on top of your base at, in, at the beginning of the show. And then after the show, you can taste my base. Mm, so it like vibrated yeah, the water. Cool. Yeah, like vibrated water. So interesting. I actually had this conversation uh, with my buddy Trip the other day, but if I won the lottery right now, and obviously, you know, you do the whole get all your friends and family set, the charity stuff. Now you're talking like money to just like do something. I want to create like a venue, like a portable dome essentially that becomes like the five sensory experience of a set and so the the dj board the performance thing is actually floating above and slowly moving around inside the dome there's no like essentially there's no central so the whole dome is its own light show laser show the bottom yeah. is actually moving a little bit so essentially you're disconnected from any sort of like central power or sure. sense and then at the same time now you've got a dome at which um you know how speakers and bass have like you can feel them like blowing like yeah. Like, but having little actual wind gusts sort of things, you can put water sprinkling above, um, obviously little fire things. And then of course you can put in little like <laughs> sensory smells, but basically the idea is you go in and enter a complete immersive world sensory experience. Um, no phones, obviously at the start, you put your phones at the outside okay. thing, <laughs> no phones. No, that's like rule number one. But, um, yeah it's kind of to your point tapping into there's all these different arts and things that pull at our emotions but usually it's just sensory triggers and how they're adjusted if you could take someone into a whole world where you kind of throw that for a whirl but also in a familiar setting of what would be kind of like a concert or a sound-esque thing it also doesn't have to be banger music but um whatever type of shit that's like my that's my lottery spend right there is creating a sensory experience like no other i like that a lottery spend I, dude i don't know what i would but i i realized earlier though like i uh i'm definitely deducing a lot of other art forms to just one form of sensory input <laughs> that i'm talking about but um because that sound like you do feel the bass you can feel it in your chest mm -hmm. like that's crazy yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, i remember standing like super close to speakers and like hearing like, feeling that bass feels good in your body yeah, or yeah. it feels bad depending on who you are. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I'm thinking, I'm thinking hundred million dollars, right? Lottery. Everyone else is already taken care of. Dude, I I feel like I'd want to do something for the greater good, but I'd want to do it on a scale where like I get I, I I can't even I don't know like if I my first thought is like oh travel the world cool sick great done that's easy. Second thought is like have a house in different places and it's like, okay, well, like that's kind of more like useless and it doesn't actually like if I have a hundred million dollars, I can do whatever I want. Then it's like about like a deep human personal level of trying to like connect people to people. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I would open up uh, a, uh, I'd open a restaurant for sure. Mm -hmm. But like I, I've talked about like a Michelin star restaurant, like try and get a Michelin star, but in a way where it like just fucks with people. Cause I kind of think a lot of restaurants are, I don't know, like I get it. So the service quality food is all excellent. But if I created something like a Michelin star restaurant mm -hmm. where you could only eat with your hands, you're not allowed to use utensils and it's all food. That's kind of difficult to eat with your hands. <laughs> like spaghetti soup. <laughs> yes, like, I think that would be really funny, yeah. and it would challenge people. But it, like the food would have to be uh, like excellent, yeah, unbelievable yeah, yeah, yeah. food that challenges you, like uh, challenges your palate, mm -hmm. and then you also are physically kind of like this is weird, like we're eating with our hands. But it, we used to eat with our hands, like but way way back in the day we ate with our hands. So like yeah yeah, yeah. Fuck, so, your, fuck your fork. No, I'm I'm with you. I actually my greatest eating experience ever was with full hands, shirt off, straight gallon of milk, pasta to the face. Um, by my 
<laughs> when did you do this? <laughs> this was, uh, I think it was probably sophomore year of high school, maybe freshman. Uh, or no, no, it was eighth grade. It was eighth grade because I was coming back from my soccer uh, practice. And you know, like you come back from sports yeah, practice, yeah. Or whatever, and you're like fucking hungry. And so it's my mom made her homemade spaghetti thing, which takes like hours. And it was the day after. So it actually kind of sits in its own, you know, gets better flavor. And it's my all time favorite meal. And I come home, I was a big milk cake at this point too. I started drinking a lot of milk. So I was in milk as a standard. <laughs> and I come home and no one's home. And we have a big thing of the leftover pasta. And you know, when you got a gallon of milk, but it's just that last little like, like yeah. shakeable. Like I'm not going to pour that into a cup. I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. It. But then it all kind of started to click. I was hungry as I've ever been post workout by myself. I heat up the pasta. And before eating it, you know, I've got all my shit there, like the fork and the knife and um, whatnot. But I'm kind of just like, fuck it drop the shit fucking take my shirt off and literally i'm not kidding just just all over my face it wasn't like i was trying to like nibble little bits of it it is legitimately the most indulgent food experience i've ever had in my entire life and to this day the best meal of my entire life and it had to do it, i mean the hand part's fun but it was the collective experience of the like hunger plus the like a little bit of a little bit of like barbaric savagery yeah a little bit a little bit of goddamn liberty (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm free i'm free i mean that was that was freedom at its finest um but yeah that's where food can be that kind of (laughs) experience but to your point on the restaurant thing my number two i think with a lottery would be opening up a restaurant that's gonna lose money but it's such a dope <laughs> thing for people to come and do. And you're, no, you're coming in on it with me. I tell, I've told my parents about this before. It would be like a 10 part meal, but you only really get a bite of each thing, right? But you get a combo of a drink and a food item that pairs great together. So like, or it'd be like in a weird way. So for example, um, I almost go, you know, you know, when you just have a good bite of bacon, it's just like a really good piece of bacon. Yeah, like really... And, you yeah. like are you a crispy bacon guy? I am a crispy light. So like I like it to have the crisp, but not burn. Like I don't like it to sh- snap as much as once it cools down. I, have it I like it like fatty. Oh, okay, I like it like with the I like it like blackened a little bit, but I don't like it to snap. No snaps. But I also like really thick bacon, so it's kind of different. That's where I kind of was hesitant yeah, with the question why. because. Even when you kind of burn it, it still has its own meat. Dude, thin, thin bacon's kind of fucked up. Yeah, no, they're just jipping. That's it's just messed up, man. Yeah. But okay, but back to the so, but even that, you don't need a whole piece of bacon. You just get or maybe it's a whole piece because it's just one bite. Okay, you get a whole piece of bacon, <laughs> but then it goes with like even kind of like a more maple whiskey thing. Like, but, like, an, so like Angel's Envy Rye is a fair, like a sweeter version of a rye right there. <laughs> Perfect. See, this is why we're a good combo here. Um, <laughs> but literally even that, or you go a step further, for example, like a good mac and cheese. Ooh. Like, you know, when you actually layer it in with some of the bacon and some jalapeno, but I don't want a whole fucking thing. In, like Riesling. Oh my God. And Riesling? Re- yeah, Riesling is like, a, oh, keep finishing yours and I'll explain. No, no, tell me that you, you're, what's Riesling? <laughs> Riesling is a grape variety from like Germany, but they grow it in the United States. They grow it in France. Um, but it's ha- like, it has like so many different levels of sweetness that it's grown in, mm-hmm. but it's able to stand up to these like really like kind of like fattier, heftier meals. So like, it's one of the few wines that you'd want to drink if you were kind of trying to pair with spicy food. Mm-hmm. Most other wine has like a little bit too much astringency because like it's higher alcohol. Like mm-hmm. Riesling kind of wavers between like, it can honestly be as low as maybe even 9% and go up yeah. to 13% just based on fermentation. But it's All good right. with a little spicy and kind of fatty things? But with the spicy, like fattiness, super cheap. Like I think yeah. if you have like a really nice, uh, maybe even like- Mac and cheese with a little bacon bits and then the jalapeno, like, but you don't need a whole fucking bowl. I'm talking- No, 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 no. Even like a spoonful, like a yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, really cool spoon that's yeah. just like one big or two bites. Yeah. Okay. This is also important. The way in which the food is consumed. So for example, when you stuff your mouth full of food, I'm convinced that it genuinely like explodes into all your taste buds and it tastes better. Like have you ever eaten a muffin where you just put the whole muffin top in your mouth? Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I'm suffocating. Yeah. But there's, (laughs) there's, 
<laughs> but ignore that feeling. <laughs> ignore the suffocation and focus on the explosions of flavor. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but still, like that kind of aspect into the service of this restaurant. So, for the mac and cheese thing, that's good because you want that full explosive thing. Whereas, even say something like a, uh, oh, it's something you like nibble on. I mean, then you're just talking about richness at that point. Like something that's really rich in mm-hmm. flavor. Like you could do like, you could even do like a little Wagyu cube. Like a tiny yeah, 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 yeah. fucking A5 Miyazaki Wagyu. Just like it's a little bit, just enough. that Because yeah. that's something that you take a little bit of and that'll coat your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rich and delicious. And, and here's the thing is we can do each of these set things. It's like a 10 service thing, but... It's not just fancy foods. Like, no, it doesn't have. Think about like a like something that's as good as like a buffalo wing and some beer. You just get like a little four ounce pour of beer and like a good buffalo wing. I'm actually all about this because like the hard part is is like, do you ever do a tasting menu somewhere? Yeah, and you're like, fuck, I really liked that first course, and I didn't want to eat the rest of it. I just want to eat a bunch of the first course. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like maybe. <sighs> oh, oh, it's like a te- okay. You do. Okay. It's a test, yeah, it's a little test. So it's it is like little cubes of mm. everything at first, and then you figure out what you want. And then you pick your grand finale is like your <laughs> thing. You pick two. You pick like your two grand, like your main course, and then there's like little snack dessert style things or something. Or we do a part two where it's literally like <laughs> <laughs> another. <laughs> there's just more. It just never ends. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps coming. <laughs> That's honestly a way though. It's it's and so it's obviously. We'll make it like ten dollars. Like we're losing money on this. This is not a profit oriented yeah, business. So here's the deal: you're gonna you're gonna rope me into something that's already thought of. The, the plan is that we're losing business off the bat. We're gonna be. This is money. losing money. We're not losing business. We're losing money. The business is a great <laughs> experience. Believe, this is lottery could, money. Here, this is your hundred mil though. After you've traveled the world, after you've done it, I all. still think you could break even. I mean, if we really want, I just whatever it is. If there at this real, point, you just make it free. <laughs> maybe maybe this is like a whole lottery game where you have to like do it and then you get your like ticket to win a reservation <laughs> but, but genuinely kind of but also you know like camping you can go to like fancy camping spots and you have to reserve them like a year and ahead yeah there's that's, that's the problem we had when we tried going camping in the sand dunes <laughs> yeah exactly so but that's because they're not it's not Theoretically, not- in a capitalist market, they would just bump up the prices until it became unbooked. But that's not what they do. They book it out appropriately and give everyone their shot at it. That's what I'm talking here to where it's literally anyone from any background can come in and get the finest. It's not even the finest meal, like the finest foods. It's just the best experience. Like, What is the dopest thing we could genuinely have someone experience food and drink wise in tune with itself under still within a relative hour, hour and a half timetable. So it's like still being able to try wines you've never tried or the whatever, even if they're not alcohols, like G2 Gatorade, purple G2, not the other G2s, just purple G2. That's on the menu somewhere because it's, we got to put people onto it. <laughs> and so there's, it's just that type of shit where it's like genuinely picking the best shit, not the notable shit or the clout shit, making it actually the best experience possible and accessible to anyone at any price range. Yet there is a competitive nature to get a spot. I have something <laughs> you need to buy. What's up? You need to buy noon, the noon grape. Oh. Tastes exactly like the purple G2. I doubt it. Identical. I doubt it. Dude, <laughs> if you're looking for it, dude, try it. Try it once. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it with grace. But uh, I. <laughs> I will be skeptical to believe that it is of match to the top level of Gatorade ever created. <laughs> I'm blown away by that statement. G2 Gatorades are not G2 Gatorade. Okay, this we're back to the generalized. No, <laughs> not all G2s. But red G2, especially when not cold, literally tastes like medicine, like cough yeah. medicine when you're eight years old and don't want to take cough medicine. That's red G2. Purple G2 tastes like fucking grape jolly cheer after you fucking just had the greatest fucking meal of your life and grape jolly cheer <laughs> i'm just talking about the emotion of <laughs> okay 
<laughs> so that's great. That's purple G2 Gatorade. What's your top Gatorade? Uh, I like Cool Blue. Cool Blue. Which is kind of... Those kind of things never made sense to me. Like, I can, I guess I can get behind, like, grape being purple. But what the fuck is blue? <laughs> like, yeah, lemonade, lemon lime, okay, sure. Orange, okay. Blueberry. Blue, but it's not blueberry. Yeah, I know, but that's not the fuck. <laughs> like, but it's so good. Whatever it is, is just, like, this amazing concoction of, <clears throat> like, sugar and salt that they've created that is blue. This is yeah. blue. <laughs> I think they did it right. Do you know who did it the best though? Was um, the blue dum dums. The little, the little lollipop. In a minute. Well, you never got your haircut recently, or something? <laughs> I haven't had a haircut in like I don't know, I haven't had a haircut in like eight months. Yeah, well, that's why you don't get enough blue dum dums. Because also, I'm not going to like sports clips. Where are you <laughs> going to get your haircut? <laughs> <laughs> I get I get like blue dum dums in my haircut, so I don't know <laughs> about your haircut. Clearly not going to the best spot in town, but.